Welcome everybody to the first points for the Volvo Ocean Race 2017-18. This is the Mapfrey in port race Alicante. One to the other and he was uh, had his hands full plenty. Rob Greenhouse trimming the mainsail and lovely pictures from the dockside here in Alicante. Right with them, Sung Hung Kai Scallywag who had a great practice race yesterday. Not looking like a good start from Mapfrey at all. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Vestas, 11th hour racing. What a super start from them. Also, Di Kafari on Turn the Tide on Plastic at the Windward End, just coming in to shot. That is a great start from D. Pair of heels, I wonder. Import tactician, we've got Rob Greenhouse putting in a little bit of uh, his opinion. This is his fifth Volvo Ocean race. Yeah, putting a new sheet on, maybe they're making a change or an inboard lead. Not quite sure. Okay, let's just have a look at these code zeros. We get a brilliant idea here of how the trim is, and it looks like on Sung Hoon Kai Scallywag, they've got a little less Halley attention. Well, they started uh, in sixth position, ducking underneath everybody. They went to the right-hand side of the race course. Maybe they love right up here at the wind windward gate, and we saw that they were that they overstood the lane. Now they're first to jibe, and you can see some of the sort of ballet on board. Sally, just talk us through exactly what's going on there. Yeah, full coordination. They're sailing these boats shorthanded, as we say, so. Uh, is, is nicer. You can actually choose a lower angle because you're not trying to go upwind. True, but. Race three times. He's won it with Group Palmer in 2011-12, and he was with uh, Dong Fong race team in the right, and that's why they started on port and ducked. Six of the seven, uh, five of the six boats, uh, Team Brunel weren't so good off the line, and they chose that. Yep, it's quite a lot of coordination to get them on, and they're really meant for that offshore speed. Meanwhile, Mafre continuing to sail well, but they are locked into that left-hand side. It's definitely got closer. I think I, I, we're... That becomes crucial if you've got the same number of points for the overall race. And it seems like a couple of boat lengths from the line. Pablo Arate helming the boat beautifully as they push the bow down. And there they go, take the win of the first 2000s be about that all on board well done ladies and gentlemen extremely good sailing and as they, as he's, uh, he's uh, strong and he's not gonna get a scare in any situation that's why he's uh, driving thank you Xavi and just uh, give of course I'm very happy uh, today we had a, a very very good day very special day you know everything is starting today we need the real uh, stuff starting next week uh, I think we had a very, very clean uh, race. The uh, uh, boat is going fast and maneuvers are probably the best of this. So everything pushing in the right direction and I'm very happy to say. Yeah, no, the, uh, the import race is always tough, that's for sure. Uh, even when we're just sailing around on one sail upwind and downwind, there's uh, still plenty going on. But uh, yeah, no, we're pretty happy. Um, we're hanging on to second, although uh, we made it a little bit hard for ourselves at, at times and, and slip back to third, but you know, that's racing, you know. Everyone's always pressuring in you, and it, it's up to you as a team just to kind of hang in there and, and make good decisions. But, you know, we served well as a team. Communication was good. You know, we got on the podium on the, on the, first, uh, on the first day. So, uh, no, a really good result for the team, I think, and uh, bodes well moving forward. <laughs> uh, this would be, uh, I guess, my fourth race here starting in Alicante. No, it's always great to see, uh, see so many people out here for the start, out in the race course, watching the racing on the shore, in the race village. Yeah, it's good, cool. Cool to have you know the sponsors cheering you on from their support boats and, uh, and having your family out there watching. My uh, my kids are in a neutral colour today because obviously Maria's with uh, with Matt Frey, but uh, no, it's great. Congratulations to, to the Matt Frey guys. So my wife will be very happy, and uh, I'm sure uh, sure my boys will be happy that Daddy came in third. <laughs> Disappointing result, honestly. Uh, big mistake down the first run. We had a decent start and uh, we're sort of happy at the top mark and then uh, didn't really make a very good call uh, with the Dong Feng. Um, you know, there was a sort of jibe, they rolled us out of the jibe and that was a really big issue. We sort of cascaded into uh, to a bigger problem at the bottom mark, but uh, we, we kind of hung in there after that. So the positives are that the speed is getting better all the time. Uh, we're starting the boat well, Witty's doing a really good job off the line, uh, manoeuvre's generally okay and even at the end of the race we're still chipping away and you know it was nice to pass Axo on the last run. Um, you know a few days ago we would have taken a fifth place but uh, right now we're sort of looking for a bit more than that so overall disappointed but um, 
yeah, we'll go and have a look at you know one very very big mistake, which is very obvious. Um, we just need to clean up our communication and spend more time sailing together. But uh, yeah, good fun day, nice of the crowds to turn out. And, you know, thoroughly enjoyable way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Oh, it was okay. I mean, fifth's not great, but it was okay. We were second at the top, and we just made one mistake on the first run, and that cost us. But everything else is good. Base speed was good. Okay. That's amazing, Alec. First time I've been to Alicante. It's uh, put on a really good show here. Yeah? It's pretty, uh, pretty popular, isn't it? Oh, it, was a, it was a pretty good showing. We put ourselves a little bit on the back foot with the start by deploying the mast to Genoa a little early. Um, but other than that, we chipped away, fought our way through the peloton, had some good things and some bad things, but uh, you know, that happens and you get third, right? Uh, you always want to win, uh, but it's not a bad way to start the campaign for sure. You get a week of downtime, rest these guys, these masthead zero attacks are a bear, you know, even though sales weren't going up and down, it's still a pretty good workout. So uh, lucky to have these guys, certainly, um, you know, and hopefully they keep putting up with me. Well, obviously not happy with the position we finished, but uh, we definitely sell better than we did yesterday. And uh, if we continue to improve like that, then um, I think that's a really good sign. We were close to the other boats, a few mistakes here and there, um, but we're definitely getting better. And that's definitely something I said that this team would do. Yeah, I mean, just the difference from yesterday to today with the maneuvers, it's like sailing with a different boat. Um, I learned a lot yesterday and I've actioned that today. And uh, we're gonna take a lot of lessons away from today and um, take it forward. And that will obviously be the kind of start of leg one where we do an import section before we head off. So it's really valuable time on the water. And hopefully in the future, our positions will get better. Right, it's incredible how the number of people on the water and the number of boats. And I think it's just really kind of heighten the game and let these guys who have never done a Volvo race before see what it's like. And um, obviously they're heading the game, but now they're looking around thinking, wow, there's a lot of people out here. It's been really impressive and it's great to see the support for all the sailors. Well, we are in uh, Alicante, Spain, and we uh, had the first import race of the Volvo Ocean Race today, and it went well for us. We finished in second place. Uh, we came off the start line quite well, uh, got into a little trouble in the mark roundings uh, with the positioning into the marks. Um, it was quite intense, it was quite busy, but then uh, really uh, yeah, kept the game simple and kept focus and made some really nice maneuvers, and Pascal took some really good decisions so I think yeah huge team effort to uh, drop to fifth and then come back to second again overall well I think it's now I'm really starting to feel it uh, you know the people around and the buzz and uh, of the Volvo Ocean Race uh, it's 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 a sign it's getting really close um, you know the first parade this morning setting out onto onto the water and seeing everyone and seeing everyone cheer for you and everyone's um, so motivated and uh, yeah it, it really helps us out on the boat as well when we're on the water and all the boats on the water it's amazing um, I saw a lot of Dutch flags out there and a lot of people cheering and you just always give that little bit of extra when when you see those people around you cheering for you and, and backing you up On dormira un autre jour, dans une autre vie, c'est pas grave. <rire> Comanche is here on the West Coast because this was one of the big five races, one of the classic ocean races that this boat was really made to do. We always chase records, that's kind of the boat's MO, and this is a really prestigious record. 
Recently this summer we broke the Transpac course world record. Now we're here for the race and we have a lot of really great competition. I imagine whichever of the Trimarans is first over the line will probably have their new race record uh, for the course, which is pretty exciting. I'm Kelly Holtis, I'm 12 years old and I am the youngest sailor this Transpac. My favorite position on the boat is probably bowman, just because like you really have to work hard to stay on the boat. You're getting wet, you're running around, and you have to just be working fast. So my advice to somebody who's starting out, the 12-year-olds on this race, 14-year-olds, is cherish every job that nobody else wants to do. Listen to the people who know how to do it, learn, and be open. We get one of those moments that means something to each one of us, and then we go back, trying to repeat it. <laughs> over and over and over. are getting prepared for the penultimate day of GC32 Racing Tour at Marseille One Design and everybody's hoping for some action out on the water. It's the last event of the 2017 GC32 Racing Tour and all the teams are trying to improve on their performances. Like Australian Simon Del Zoppo's Film Racing and Sebastian Rogue's Team NG. Uh, venue's been great so far. We've had good um, falling conditions for our training days and uh, a great first day of racing. Unfortunately, yesterday was a little bit lighter winds, um, but uh, we've been up and, uh, and and competitive up near the front a few times. We're obviously on our uh, you know big learning curve, uh, but, but, we've, but we've we've come a long way since our first event in uh, in Parma, and um, we're pretty excited about the rest of the event. Hopefully, uh, we we'll get two more good days of sailing. All the team are very closer. Uh about the points and uh, today uh, uh, will be a, an important day because uh, a good uh, a good races can uh, uh, go on the top of the of the ranking. The light weather conditions allowed three tight and tactical races to be sailed. French team Zulu put in a great performance and won all three races. Otherwise, real team and Naofumi Kamai's Mama Ayoto from Japan were the best scoring boats of the day. Tomorrow, the winner of the Marseille One design will be confirmed and the ultimate victor of the 2017 GC32 Racing Tour will finally be crowned. Stay tuned. David Telford's tenacity became the first non-Victorian crew to claim the Australian title in the historic Cooter boat class when the Sydney team wrapped up four races in a tricky series on Pittwater on Sunday, October 15.
The second New South Wales team and Tenacity's Royal Prince Alfred Yacht Club's clubmates, Larry Eastwood's Sylvia, finished runner-up by two points and Sorrento crew of Margarita, skippered by Australian class president James Michel, completed the podium results. The likes of professional yachtsman Steve McConaughey, coach Rod Haig-Boss and moss sailor Josh McKnight raised the bar at what was already a very serious class meet. Serious enough for 10 Victorian owners to transport their cooters on B-double trucks from the Mornington Peninsula and one to send his boat the length of the continent from Perth for which the co-owner of Eclipse, Jim Wilshire, was awarded a special trophy for the farthest travelled. In the Waddle Cup, reserved in 2017 for the Classic Cooters, given the Nationals run alongside the annual Sydney Series, Kelly Holder Syndicate owned Kathleen Mary, built in 1988. From the Royal Motor Yacht Club Broken Bay collected the main trophy, while Tim Phillips Century Old Muriel finished second and Jeff Richardson Georgia placed third. China, um, Tishan Bay, very difficult conditions and uh, yeah, looking forward to the challenge. They're in trouble now, NZ Extreme trying to go for the duck and they swipe the rudders. Alingi crossed the line but as winners of Act 2, Qingdao, Mazarin Cup. Yeah, well we're here, Sunny Madeira, Act 3, the season's about to kick off. This is the race leaders, Alingi, big breeze and SAP Extreme on the inside. And Act 3 goes the way of SAP Extreme, winners here in Madeira. Hopefully a little bit more puff today and a uh, little bit further right and hopefully slightly flatter water and then, yeah, boiling, boiling, boiling. The Swiss team and SAP Extreme, the Swiss going over the bowels of Adam Adopio. Well, Omar and Air having a great run after this jive here. Again! That's two now! Oman Air coming across the line. Race 22, the final race. Double points, and Phil Robertson stamps his authority on the Extreme Sailing Series. We need to breathe, and it looks good today. It's so tight between second and sixth, so you need an awesome day. That's the only thing what helps. Come on. 
Langeva VAR Academy, they're off to a strong start to Winwood here. SAP Extreme foiling away from the field. Oman Air have done it. They are victorious in Act 5 Hamburg, presented by Land Rover. Points are extremely close. Every race is going to be extremely important. We're going to be coming out with our foot on the floor and ready just to try and take as many race wins as we can. That was superb sailing. Look at the speed of SAP Extreme. SAP Extreme, Adam Minoprio at the helm, steers the boat across the finish line. A commanding performance here in Cardiff.